Here we go one last time for NR on this channel. One last time for the Jell-O Cup Series. As today, we are here at the Ricky Raceway and we are ready to crown ourselves a champion under the lights here tonight. You are watching a special presentation from Tinkle Group Gaming. Hello guys, Brian here. Welcome one last time, one and all, to the Jell-O Cup Series. This is the championship race, the Rogers 500 here at the Ricky Raceway. As we get going, I want to say I'm so grateful to all of you who have watched the full weekend so far. It has been exciting, to say the least, between the qualifying races, the Hitachi Truck Series Championship the night before, and congratulations to Addie Davidson, who holds on to win the title. Um, and of course, you know, she wins her first and only title in the series. Um, and now we're going to have four guys that are going to hope to do the exact same. Daniel Voiles, of course, being the one up front. Then, of course, you've got Annie Thomas, his teammate at Stuart Haas Racing, who's been really hot since the playoffs started. So she could very well find her way to the front. Of course, she's going to have a little work to do to get there. Um, as will Daniel Gittero, who is going to start back in 35th, but of course, due to crashing in, in his qualifying race, he will go to the rear of today's race. And then, of course, there is Bradley Reen, who the second-year driver who struggled in year one, but boy, he has had a career surge here in year number two, driving that RFK Ford. One thing to note, no Chevys in the championship this year. It is three Fords and one Toyota. And, of course, um, many different skill sets here. Of course, Daniel Gittero, very good at these kinds of tracks. So just because he's going to be starting last after going to the rear, don't count him out of this race. He always finds his way to the front as the race goes on. Um, Bradley Ream has been really strong all year. I believe he's led a lot of the playoff standings throughout really these last nine weeks or these last nine races, rather. And then Annie Thomas has been strong. And Daniel Voiles is driving the defending championship team or driving for the defending championship team. That team, of course, won here last year or won the title here last year with Zach Fitzwater. So we can't put him under the radar by any stretch of the imagination, neither Stuart Haas Racing in general, because this team has always shown up in the championship race. Now, nobody has won the championship race that is battling for the championship. That Could that be something we see change today? That's going to be a big question. Will we see the big one? We have 45 laps and 40 cars around this tight 2.25 mile super speedway. And of course, could we see any more shenanigans that could throw a wrench in the championship battle? There's so many questions to be answered. And of course, we will answer them shortly when we get to our starting lineup and once we get into the green flag and the race. But before we do so, I want to just take a moment and just say be sure to tune in at the end of this race. I will have some post-race comments. We'll have the final standings, um, the final send-off, and hopefully some further updates. So um, this is going to be rather a lengthy race, not just because it's 45 laps, but because also we have to address, you know, the future here. We also have to kind of get some thanks and, you know, all that out of the way. So we hope you'll stay tuned for the final time here with NR on Tinkle Group Gaming. And actually, I should note, this might not be the end totally. But um, at least for the final time with an NR series here on this channel. So stay tuned. Of course, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we will take the green flag. We'll also have your starting lineup for today's race so stay tuned we'll be back here on tinkle group gaming in just a moment searching for greatness in a 
see the dying and shameless, uh, I see the aimless, I don't wanna be one of the nameless, I'ma wake up with the mindset that one day I'm gonna make it, and I don't think I'll be fine if I don't break my limitations, don't try to stop me, I exist to remember your story, I'll make a decision if I want some peace or if I want the glory, yeah, don't want a life that is complacent or possibly boring, yeah, just want a life that is worth every day exploring, yeah. My whole life I just wanted someone who would notice me My whole life I just wanted to be somebody to be Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great Yeah, I just wanna be great here we go, we've gotten the command to fire the engines, these guys will be rolling off the banked pit road. The starting lineup will be on the left hand side of your screen, and of course you may notice a little bit of a difference. Daniel Boyles, Mike Brown on the front row. Of course Daniel Boyles, one of those championship contenders, he will be highlighted in yellow. How's about Ali Liard, Dan uh, Chad Bedford, and then Austin Shaw rounding out that top 10 as we take a look at the second page. Of course, Bradley Ream, the next highest of the playoff drivers. And in Christian Bracken, too. How's about that? The driver of the 45. And of course, uh, Kevin Howard rounding out that top lane. As you take a look at the rest of the run of the starting lineup there, uh, Colin Cropley, of course, Scott, Colin Cropley, Scott Upton, Cam Arkman, and Daniel Gittero, all the cars that will be going to the rear of this race. We will have four onboard cameras. All your championship four contenders will carry onboard cameras. And of course, we will be carrying this race from high above, so you won't miss the battles for the championship lead throughout the event. For the final time, the pace car is off. We're ready to go racing, as it'll be Daniel Voiles and Michael Brown, the part timer. They'll lead us into the tri oval. The last race of the Jello Cup Series is underway. We'll follow this camera for a brief bit before going high above, but Daniel Voiles, he gets the early race lead as we go through one and two. Michael Brown, he wants the lead here on lap number one. Keep in mind, Daniel Voiles cannot get bonus points for leading laps. He has to be the highest finishing playoff driver if he wants to be the champion. Same for the rest of these guys. They do not have to win the race, but boy, it would be cool if they did. Michael Brown, he will lead that opening lap. Big for that 62 team, of course, Beard Motorsports. One of the teams that is part-time. This is their 10th attempt of the season, as along with the others. And we want to thank all of our part-time entries for being a part of this season. Um, you know, of course, they did not get a chance to get a full season ride. So we, of course, want to show them our gratitude for being a part of the series, making it interesting as Chad Bedford now goes to the race lead, and you notice there Bradley Ream in the number six has taken the lead in the championship race. These guys, of course, for those who don't normally watch our series, of course, this race, we tend to go over 200 miles an hour. We are at 210 on the straightaways. As you see there, Bradley Ream leading that inside line. Dylan Ibrahimi in there, who we're following his telemetry. He is at 212, entering turns three and four and carrying it <laughs> out of the corner. Now you see the six of Bradley Ream, but look who he's being pushed by. He's being pushed by Brittany White. And bear this in mind as we go on board and look out the back camera of that six. That 14 has a teammate in the championship battle, two teammates in the championship battle. So you wonder if there it happens right there. I was about to say, I don't know why you would see the 14 try to help out the six. Because again, you got two teammates. But again, I know it is also a long race. We're only on lap four. We're about to get lap number five in a moment. 
here as you go back high above. And Brittany White leading the race now. And here comes Charles Sanfer. And of course, once again, we are high above. Try to get a look. Oh, Daniel Gittero off the pit lane. Did something happen to the 20? And there he goes. And somehow we stay green. Oh, no, we don't. There goes the 65, the 3, the 51. I thought I was going to say 15 for a second, and there will be our first caution of the event. As we go up front, you see that Brittany White leads the race. Let's just double check, be sure what happened. But yeah, Daniel Gittero about to go a lap down here early. That is not a good start for that number 20 team. And we'll, of course, go see what happened to Daniel Gittero as well as go see what happened to bring out the first caution of the race here at Ricky. So here we are on board with Daniel Gittero, and it looks like an unplanned pit stop, really, as you look at it. Let's go to the TV cameras, and you see there he's down to speed for the pits. And it just looks like they top off with fuel. And I'm wondering if that was a planned pit stop. But let's go back high above. Let's fast forward because this is the important part. Because I think this is what starts everything. Look at how this 20 merges. Let's go to the cockpit view here. As we take a look at the replays. There he comes up the track. He spins and almost goes up and over. A remarkable save. Daniel Gittero, but what happens up ahead to the number 51? I believe J.J. Bell starts this whole mess. Let's see. Oh, Colin Cropley actually starts it. So it looks like Cropley maybe gets a little low. Yeah, it looks like the 20 kind of messed up his angle. And you see there, he's already below the double yellow. That banking pushes him right back up. The track into his teammate and into the 51 and ultimately ends J.J. Bell's season right there as well as his own. Um, unfortunate break there um, for all drivers involved. Unfortunate for Daniel Gidro. He's going to have an uphill battle if he wants to win this championship. But we'll see if he can do it in just a moment when we go back green here at Ricky. Welcome back. Let's check in. Of course, Brittany White is going to be the leader when we go back green but where are your championship four drivers we start with the four of daniel voiles he is second of the championship drivers in 13th currently running in the lead of these championship four cars is bradley ream in ninth at number six the 10 of annie thomas currently 26th she is third of the championship four and then Daniel Gittero, he's got a little work to do if he wants to get back into this. We'll see if he can do so. He runs in the 40th spot, but he will move up to 39th at the line this time. Brittany White, Charles Sanford, they'll lead us back to the green. We're racing once again at Ricky. And we will take you once again high above. As we look at them get the start, of course, they go up through the gears, lower pit or lower pace speed after the start of the weekend. Charles Sanford up to the lead already. You look at those six or seven, they have kind of just pulled away. But here comes Bradley Ream with Michael Brown. And Michael Brown getting right up to the bumper of the six. Now keep in mind, I'm sure a lot of these guys have been told, don't interfere with the championship four. Let them battle it out. We saw what happened last year with Zach Fitzwater and Reggie Fogelman. That ultimately tipped the championship in Zach Fitzwater's favor. And I'm sure these guys don't want a repeat of that. Here comes the four of Daniel Boyles as the 47 of Kevin Howard goes to the race lead. Of 
course, the other question with Daniel Gitter all lap down, is there any damage to that 20? Because if there is detrimental damage, he is not going to be up to speed. And let's go take a look, because you see these guys are going 213. He's able to keep pace, but I think he's just so far back right now that, again, you got to wonder if he's hanging back there right now. Saying, I don't want to damage my race car. I want to see the finish. And hope that these guys who are battling up here in this mess as you see Bradley Ream go three wide and Daniel Boyles has taken the lead in the championship. And maybe not wanting to tear up his stuff even more. And again, Toyota has never won a championship in the Jell-O Cup Series. That's something of note. second Dylan Ibrahimi into the lead and look at that inside lane it is just so well established right now that outside lane just can't compete with it if they can just stay in this line they're gonna really keep, kick those guys far back as Daniel Voiles takes the lead that lap but again no bonus points for the championship four they have to race to be the highest finisher All this talk about Michael Brown, here comes Patrick Smith, you see there in the bottom corner just above the, you know, just above the race, you know, telemetry there on the bottom of the screen. And here he comes with Parker Jones and Kyler Anderson there. That was about the five, Dick Clark, the 54 of Cameron Arkman, you saw him back there. Battling it out three wide, tight three wide. Here we go once again. How's about Kevin Howard? He will take the race lead. The 45 back there, Christian Bracken as well. Boyle still leading the championship race or championship battle at this point. Here goes that 11 of Michael Collins, a former champion himself. And he's going to look for the race lead. Will he get it? Yes. Looking inside, you see nobody really up there to battle Daniel Voiles for this title race right now. So he is in firm control of this race. Not quite. Now you see Bradley Ream coming into the picture in the bottom center. Right on board with Bradley Ream in that number six. You see Patrick Smith go to the race lead. title race. Where is the 10? I have not seen the 10 in this frame yet, and you see there, she's at the back of the pack, 
That is Annie Thomas right there. And what about the 20 of Daniel Gittero? And he is off the pace. It looks like he has lost the draft. It would appear as Cameron Arkman now the race leader. So it looks like once again we have a two car battle between Bradley Ream and Daniel Hoyles, the two veterans of the series, hoping to claim their first titles. Their first and only, I should say, of course. Again, stay tuned for the post race. We will have some messages, uh, or I will have a message to you all. Um, I'll also have the final standings, so you won't want to miss any of the action coming your way. Bumper. And again, we saw those lapped cars running real slow, so you wonder right about now where you know how will this impact these leaders? Again, they are 20 miles an hour slower almost. And this is a narrow track, and with these guys running too wide, they will catch them. And it's going to be an issue when they do. So if you're Bradley Ream, do you take the advice of Annie Thomas and kind of just fade back and hope something happens to these other guys? So Bracken take the lead. Here comes the nine of Carlos Sanchez. There's the first lap car, that is Colin Cropley. And we are going to have a lap traffic moment. Where does the three go? And does he stay out of the way of Bradley Ream? He does not, but Bradley Ream's line is going to get moving here. That whole inside lane is going to get moving. And that's going to hand the lead right to Bradley Ream and the championship lead as well. Try to get organized once again. Try to get back up to speed. 50 water hanging back there. Of course, the outgoing champion in that number 16. He will go out as the all-time winningest driver at the end of the day. Probably going to go out if the goat when this is all said and done. Do we have a caution? We do have a caution. See the pace car coming out. There's a lot of smoke on that back stretch, and it looks like Dylan Ibrahimian in the 17 of Kyler Anderson. Might be in this one. Oh, Charles Sanford as well. And let's go see what happened. Holy cow, does Charles Sanford go for a ride here? See, it all starts with Dylan Young and Dick Clark, the two Hendrick teammates there. And Dylan Young takes a very hard hit into that inside wall. So does Dick Clark. But watch what happens to Charles Sanford he goes up and over multiple times. It's almost as scary as that Ryan Priest wreck we saw last year at Daytona. But he goes up and over multiple times, goes up and over his teammate almost, Nathan Orman there. And still flipping wildly is that number 99. And then he hits his teammate Nathan Ormond, who was hoping to end the season on a high note. He will not. And a lousy rookie campaign is going to come to an end here today. 
at least lousy by his standards. But unfortunately, you see Fitzwater will come to rest on his, or I'm sorry, Sanford will come to rest on his roof. And that'll end the day for both track house full timers. Um, tough break for those guys. No championship guys involved. So we will take you back to the green in just a moment. Here we go. Look at all the cars out of the race. Dylan Ibrahimian is one of them. The one of Nathan Orman, the 99 Charles Sanford, the 24 Dylan Young, the 5 of Dick Clark, and the 51 of J.J. Bell. Their days are all done. And something has happened to Zach Fitzwater. He is blown up here as we're coming back to the green. And your outgoing champion will not end his career on a high note. That is unfortunate for the driver that 16, and it is another position for Daniel Gidro, as it'll be Bradley Ream, Alexander Underwood, Jaina Fogelman, Austin Shaw, and Michael Brown. They will lead us back to the green. We are racing once again at Ricky. And at this point, with these cautions, if you are Daniel Gittero, you are hoping, number one, you got to stay a lap down. Just keep in mind, if we do have overtime here, for those who are new to the series, the overtime rules are, if you are one lap down, you will get a wave around to get back on the lead lap. However, if you are multiple laps down, you will finish in the position of which you've crossed the line at the end of regulation and your race is over. So for him, he is going to hope and pray to stay one lap down and get right back into this race and hope his championship contenders either fall out of the race or fall back to him that when the overtime starts, if there is an overtime, he will be right in position to win the title. Michael Brown looking for the lead. You saw Austin Shaw take it away for the time being. But now Michael Brown will go to the race lead and we will go high above once again to show you the battle for this championship. As you see, Boyles is leading. Bradley Ream is in a tough position right now. As you see Patrick Smith back there in the 91. The two part-timers leading the field. No part-timer has won a Jell-O Cup Series race. So could we see that change today as well? And actually, correction, Annie Thomas is leading the championship battle. That is my mistake. We, you know, it's funny, yet Annie Thomas has not been to the front yet today, and we just completely forgot about her for a moment. So our apologies to Annie Thomas, as you see her leading the championship right now for the first time today. Here comes her teammate, Brittany White. That is not the battle for the championship. The next closest car is that four. See the 62 out in front. Here comes the four. He got to the bottom lane. And that is going to be the battle for the championship. Let's go on board with the 10 of Annie Thomas. Let's go on the roof cam and watch this battle play out. There goes the four. The four to the race of the championship. season dad ahead we do have a lapped car it is the 23 of Mitchell Hodak and he is severely off the pace after that wreck so this could be a major problem he is well over 30 miles an hour slower than the leaders and they're going to run right into the back of them but they'll save it Remarkable save for the whole field. Oh my goodness. 
Michael Brown got him all bent out of shape, though. And we see Mitchell Hodak going to come to the pits. But wow, is all I could say. That was so similar to how Reggie Fogelman lost the title last year. As we got 15 to go, they're going to catch another slower car. That's the 17, Tyler Anderson. Oh, and this time Michael Brown in the wall. The 17 is around. And once again, a save. Let me tell you something. Someone blast Molly Hatchet because we are flirting with disaster right now. Here at Ricky, as you see, Boyle's in firm control of this championship. This 14 going to look to go back to back with two different drivers. Annie Thomas back there, her teammate though, hoping to have something to say about it. As will Bradley Ream and this group will go to work to try to close the lead on Daniel Boyle's. Is there any other lap cars ahead? There is, and it is the number 47 of Kevin Howard. And I can't tell. Is he on the back stretch? No, he's entering turns one and two. They are going to catch him probably on the back straight here, if not in three and four. They're going to battle it out. The four is going to go high. Is this the smart move? Oh, look at these guys having to slow down. This is going to bring the whole field back into this battle. And that inside lane is going to get going. That is not good news for Daniel Voiles. He picks the wrong lane. So does Annie Thomas. But is this planned? Is this potentially planned? In order to fall behind Dylan Eber, or in order to fall behind Bradley Ream and make a run at the title. Oh, Annie Thomas just about takes out the 22. And you see those two get swarmed right behind the lap traffic, or stuck behind the lap traffic. Voiles is going to get free. Questions will surround Danny Thomas. There is Daniel Gittero, by the way. Keep that in mind. Again, he is a lap down. This is not the battle for the championship at the moment. He is going to have to get back on the lead lap to have a shot. And this isn't over by any stretch of the imagination. And if you think it is, you might want to reconsider. Of course, you see the 67 dead ahead. That is Logan Williams. And could he potentially do something to help this 20 car out? Within legal parameters, of course, without being, you know, a bad sport. Which I don't think he will. Logan Williams, keep in mind... He is the furthest, he is 51st in the standings. He is the lowest of the part-timers and the full-timers. So he needs some points, and you gotta wonder if he will push here to try to get him. There you saw the 17 once again, and I told you this wasn't over, and I was not joking. Trevor Collins, he's going to go to the lead. Christian Bracken is going to follow in second. But now you saw the 21 is all by himself. How's about this, though? That 17 is going to drag the 4 and the 10 right back into it. And Bradley Ream has got to be fuming right now at his teammate. Saying, what the heck, dude? See 
they're going to catch the 21. You saw him get by the 67. Bradley Green still in control of the title. As we come to 7 to go at the line. And we do have a caution. Oh, man. No more lapped cars. We are battling it out. It is the 31, it looked like, of Aaron Jeter in the pits. And now we're going to have a fight on our hands. Go grab the popcorn, and we'll be right back with the replay. Let's go see what happened. We have our first championship competitor out of the race. Annie Thomas, four wide here. And this will end her day. You see she bounces off the 42, the 14, no time to react. And hard into that wall, into the worst spot of the wall. And that drags Aaron Jeter into this. Michael Collins, just nowhere to go for Annie Thomas. Her day comes to an end. Her championship comes to an end here at Ricky. Let's go get the onboard shot of the number 10. We are on board with Danny Thomas. Oh. Those just hurt to watch. Tough break for Annie Thomas. Her championship hopes come to an end here in the late stages of the race. And just when you thought she was taking it methodical, it does not pan out. We'll take you to the green in just a moment. I don't know if this is going to go down as a caution. Daniel Gittero wanted to see now, but we are going back racing here. You see all the cars out of the race. And we go up and you see the 10 of Annie Thomas. She will finish in 31st today. Daniel Gittero moves up a spot in the championship, but as of right now, it's a head-to-head -head battle between the series veterans Bradley Ream and Daniel Voiles. It's going to be head-to-head, -head, five laps to determine a champion. But could we have overtime? That is a real possibility. As we get ready to go back racing, it will be Trevor Collins, Christian Bracken, Cameron Arkman, Roberto Crown Jr., and Jaina Fogelman. We're back racing with five to go. And bear in mind that 67 is a lapped car. So how will Logan Williams affect this battle? You see the two of them, they're going to go head to head. Bumper to bumper to determine the champion. Are they going to split the 67? No. Daniel Voile stays in it. Hoping the 67 can help them get around. Cameron Arkman to the lead. You see there, it's not going to do anything for Voiles. He's going to have to get around with the out of turn 4-4 four, four to go here at Ricky. And here he goes. He's going to get one shot at this, I think. Meanwhile, Bradley Ream is going to fight for the win. You see Gittero back there. He is hoping. He is praying for a caution. Because a caution at this stage of the race will trigger overtime. And that will put him right in the thick of this battle. Here comes Voiles. He's looking inside. He'll fall in behind Roberto Crown Jr. Up front, it is Cameron Arkman. He is leading the race. Hoping to close it out and get one more victory. Close out the season the way he started it. In victory lane. Here comes Daniel Voiles. We'll get two laps of racing to go. Daniel Voiles looking for the championship lead. The 
Does Bradley Ream have an answer? If he has it, he's got to find it now. Otherwise, this is going to be a walk-off for Daniel Voiles. The other factor, could we have a caution? A caution ends the race, or a caution brings overtime within the next few feet, but we will see the white flag. The one lap of racing to go one last time, presented by Mitchell's Memes. Trevor Collins to the lead. Here comes Mitchell Collins. Everyone vying to be the last winner in Jell-O Cup Series history. Mitchell Collins is in the right position. Daniel Voiles leading the title. And it looks like he will be uncontested. Mitchell Collins to the lead. Will Patrick Smith try to steal a win? He's not going to get there. Mitchell Collins is going to win the final Jell-O Cup Series race at Ricky Raceway. Congratulations to Mitchell Collins, the winner here today. And he will be known as the final winner in series history. But he won't be known as the final champion. Daniel Voiles, he is your Jell-O Cup Series season number nine champion. And how's about that for the Bush Light 4 team? Back-to-back -back titles. Two different drivers. They won it last season with Zach Fitzwater. And now they have won it with Daniel Voiles. Congratulations to the driver of the four. As we will take a look at your results. Mitchell Collins... Parker Smith, he came so close, he just couldn't get there. But he has a great finish, nonetheless. Carlos Sanchez in third. Trevor Collins fourth. Alex Underwood in fifth. How's about Cam Arkman sixth? Pretty Shaw seventh. Roberto Crown eighth. Faith Cole in ninth. And Daniel Voiles rounds out your top ten. And wins the championship. Then you look on Dowd, Bradley Ream, he's going to come home as the runner-up in the title as we take a look at the second page. Um, of course, Daniel Gidero, he needed a caution. He needed something to go his way at the end. Nothing went his way today, unfortunately. He comes home in 25th, and then Annie Thomas, unfortunately, will come home in 31st. She doesn't even see the finish of the championship race we will be right back with your final standings and a final message here in just a moment so stay tuned for the post race show here on tinkle group gaming all right welcome everyone to the post race show congratulations again to mitchell collins he's today's race winner his second win of the year he ends the season, ironically, in 22nd in the point standings. And one thing to note, Mitchell Collins is the one who advocated for Ricky Raceway to be on the schedule. So I bet this is even more rewarding for him to be the final winner in Jell-O Cup Series history at a track he vouched for. And, of course, you know, eventually got. And we're just so happy um, for Daniel Voiles. Congratulations to him. Three wins on the year, five top fives, nine top tens. He's your champion. Uh, Bradley Ream, Daniel Gitterro, Annie Thomas, just unfortunate. Bradley Ream was really the only one even close to him. And then uh, Daniel Gitterro was just out of it. He needed a lot to go his way. Just couldn't get it to happen for him. And um, Annie Thomas just involved in that horrific wreck toward the end. Um, didn't even see the finish. That is just unfortunate for her. She really heated up come playoff time, and she really was the strongest playoff driver remaining before this race. So that is just unfortunate for that team. As you take a look at the remaining point standings, of course, um, not too much movement, unfortunately. Um, 
you know, you see all the final stats and stuff, and I'll give you a second to kind of look at that while I kind of just take a minute here. And I just want to say thank you. Um, we got a lot of thank yous to get to, so let me flip screens real quick. Um, and just say real quick a big thank you to all of you who participated in these series over the years. Big thank you to all 51 that you just saw on that list for being a part of this and being a part of history this year, being the final roster for the Jell-O Cup Series overall in history. Um, thank you to Dylan Young for helping me get my comeback started here. Thank you to Trent Dunham as well, who got me my initial start, who was not a part of this series, unfortunately. Um, you know, but obviously wish him well, wish him the best. Um, haven't heard from him in a while, but I've always wish people the best. Um, you know, thank you to Mitchell for, you know, and, you know, Mitchell Collins for letting us use his memes as kind of our last lap and overtime sponsor. Thanks to Zach Fitzwater for allowing us to use his angriness to uh, highlight the lap traffic as well as his commentary. Same for Dylan Young. Uh, thanks for co-commentating on a bunch of races for us over the seasons. Um, thanks to Richard Johnson or maybe he's better known as Joven Anderson right now. Thank you to him for his co-commentary, for his help with the game to get it up and working and everything. And thanks to the NR community as a whole. Um, I've done this for 10 years. Um, 10 years of my life, one chapter has closed, but another one is going to open very soon. Stay tuned for that update to come very soon as far as the future of Tinkle Group Gaming. This channel is not done by any means. Um, and I will say NR is done by no means on this channel. Just because the series are done, just because the real big stuff is done, does not mean we will not have stuff in the future. So for those who are in my NR Discord, I sure hope you will stick around because there may or may not be stuff in the future. Whether it's online racing on an occasion, you know, an online racing special of sorts, whether it's, you know, a special offline event that I have signups for, we don't know, okay? We don't know what the future holds just yet. So the best thing I could tell you is just keep your eyes peeled. Um, this is not done by any means. This, you know, NR is what made this channel. NR is the reason we have 106 subscribers strong right now. Um, and... Again, this is a bittersweet moment for me, so <laughs> I'm trying to take this all in and not keep you guys over 50 minutes, but, you know, um, but again, just so many thanks, so much gratitude. Thank you to also to the 42 truck drivers that took part in the Hitachi Truck Series. Thank you to all who took part in the Lyft National Series and the uh, 7-Eleven IndyCar Series over the seasons as well. Um, again, this is not goodbye. This is not the end of Tinkle Group Gaming. This is not the end of the Empire, which, of course, I want to thank Zach Carmine for taking this NCN channel, this uh, GCN channel, whatever we called it in the past, into the Tinkle Group umbrella. Um, it's been, you know, quite a ride. It's been quite, you know, it, it's going to continue. And obviously, um, you know, we'll have an update video coming Within the next week or two, we'll have an, hopefully an update video coming, which we will um, tell you first and foremost what's to come. Um, that's what I'm hoping to get out there is what's to come as far as this channel goes. And, you know, um, we hope that, you know, while many of you were here for NR and probably are disappointed to see NR go... Um, as far as the Jell-O Cup series, all those series I just listed, for those who um, may be upset to see it go, I hope you guys still stick around and watch the new videos, give the new content a chance whenever we get that rolling, whether it's here or on Tinkle Sports and Entertainment, which I hope you will give a subscribe to because we're going to try to get that going very soon once again. Um, but overall, just grateful 
for 10 years, you know, on and off again, obviously, but 10 years of just friendship, lifelong friendships, um, you know, 10 years of doing stuff, you know, making content that I loved to make. Um, and you guys, obviously, without you guys, we wouldn't be making this content. So this is a testament to you guys. This is not a, you know, this is not a testament to me. This is a testament to you for sticking it out all these years. And again, I can't apologize enough for how long this season had to drag on because of countless issues, whether it was my computer, whether it was, you know, um, anything else for that matter, you know, life getting in the way, um, you know, technical difficulties, you know, anything really. So, um, just thank you all for sticking it out. Thank you guys for, once again, just being a part of all nine seasons of NR on this channel. Um, and again, like I said, NR is not going away. And I hope you'll stick around to see what comes next. Even if it's not NR related. Because, like I said, I think we're going to have some cool stuff coming here on Tinkle Group Gaming. And especially over on TSC very soon. I know I keep teasing it with no <laughs> results just yet. But... Like I said, stay tuned. I, I promise you, once we get rolling, you'll like what you see. I hope you'll like what you see. But with that, once again, let's take a look at the final standings. And again, a big thank you to all these... Oh, hang on. Big thank you to all those 51 drivers right there that you see on your screen for being a part of this. And thank you all who may not be a part of the series who watched this event tonight. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, be sure to give it a like. Um, you know, and obviously be sure to subscribe because again, the future is coming very soon here to Tinkle Sports and, or Tinkle Group in general. Um, and again, we hope, like I said, stay in the NR Discord. Just that's the biggest question. That's the biggest plead I have with you guys. Please stay in the NR Discord. We're going to continue to promote other NR series as well. Um, it's not going to be just focused on my NR ventures and my gaming ventures, but it's going to, you know, like I said, we want to obviously help the community out as well as a whole, you know, so anybody starting an NR series, anybody who's struggling to get NR started like I did for the longest time, um, be sure to join that discord because like I said, we'll allow you to promote your series in there. We'll allow you to, you know, at least help you get started. And obviously to all my friends out there who do NR, if you need a co-commentator, if I'm free, hit me up. I will gladly um, co-commentate on any races going forward. But again, um, thank you guys for many, many years um, of this uh, adventure. Um, thank you so much for being a part of it. Uh, you guys mean the world to me. I will miss you. <laughs> you guys i will miss doing this greatly um but again i look forward to the next chapter uh, hope you guys enjoyed tonight enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll be back here on tingle group gaming real soon good night everyone